Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy David at the Irish Hotspur, Ireland's number one Spurs fan. Ireland's only answer to Harry Kane. Presenting Tell Me Your Spurs Story. And here with us tonight, we have an absolute gem of a guest. It's my man, Simon Cohen. How are you keeping? Fine, thanks, Dave. How are you doing? I'm all good, my man. I'm all good. So I am. I have to say, I'm, I'm keeping well. How are you? You're, you're keeping well and all. Yeah, full of smiles still. I am indeed. Glad the season's finished. So no stress at the moment. No, stress yeah, free. Look, it's stress free. It's look, it's been a long one for all Spurs fans all over the world, you know. And I think, I think we're all glad the season's over, so we can kind of kick back, relax a little before we go into next season with more renewed optimism, you know. So <laughs> only to get our hearts broken again. But look, we'll wait and see what the summer, the summer, um, the summer brings. But just quickly, <clears throat> before we get into you sharing some of your stories with us, what manager would you like to come in, Simon? Well, look, oh, I'll be going on about Conte. I like to see Conte come in. He's been my number one choice for quite a while now. Um, Ten Hag, maybe number two choice. Even Diego Simone, maybe. But one of them three I'd be very happy with. But as you know, there's a lot of talk about Pochettino coming in. So we'll have to see how that pans out in the next how few days. How do you feel about Pochettino coming back, Simon, if he does? I thought... I still think it's a bit too soon for him to come back. He's only been gone, what, a year and a half, two at the most or something? So, you know, yeah. I think it's too soon for him to come back. Plus, coming back in with Levy still being there. Can you see that working out after he sacked him before? Not really. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I, I, I agree with you in, in, in that aspect. Like, I do have my reservations about him coming back. Like, as in, it's it's like that old saying, isn't it? You, you, you never go back to your ex. You, finish, you broke up for a reason. But, at the same time, if anyone can come back in and steal the philosophies back into the club and, and send us on the right direction, it's him. But for me, Simon, I don't know what you think on this, but I think he'd be very stupid to come back without having assurances that he can get rid of the, some of the players that got him sacked in the first place. But not only that, but have control over transfers and have more money to spend to bring in the quality players that he wants and that he needs to be able to deliver trophies at Tottenham. I totally agree. I really do. And also, got the Harry Kane situation going on, haven't we? Can he keep Harry Kane for another season if he comes in? What do you Possible. think? That's a possibility. Pochettino comes in. Kane may say, OK, I'll give it another year. and See how things pan out. If we don't win nothing, then I'm definitely gone. So there's a possibility Pochettino could keep him for another year. But um, who's, it depends if Pochettino, you know, does come in. But I still think it's not going to happen with Pochettino coming in. I really Do you don't. Think it's I don't think it could possibly be, yeah, with all the season tickets waiting to go back out again. It could be possibly a PR stunt. So um, we're we're going to know within within the next week or so at the most to find out if he's coming in or not. But this needs to get resolved as soon as possible on the manager front because it's been dragging on. Well, since the Colin Cup final would be, you know, just before then. So we need to get a manager in because we've got there's a lot of work needs to be done behind the scenes with players going out, players coming in. Yeah. So we need to get this manager in pronto. Yeah. If, no. it's, Pochettino, if it's Pochettino, yeah, great. But will Levy still be in there and will he get back? To, it could all end up, you know, because it could all go Pete Tong again. We don't know. Yeah. So um, no. like I said, I'd like to see Pochettino come back if Levy wasn't still at the helm. But Levy's still going to be there. So I think it's all to do with Levy trying to get brownie points, trying to get Pochettino in to please the fans. So things haven't been that great lately, have they, with Levy? So one way yeah. of getting the fans back on side is getting Pochettino back. And then the fans will be off his, off Levy's back for a while. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. 100%. But look, I definitely agree with you. The manager appointment has to be made as soon as possible because there's so much work to be done. The last thing we need is is for a manager to come in late, then, you you know, you're trying to get rid of players and bring players in during pre-season and stuff like that. Whatever manager comes in now, not only that, we have to try and get a director of football in and stuff like that and get your players in before pre-season to give whoever comes in next in charge a, a proper chance of, of, of succeeding next season, you know, by having everything in place early so that you can work with the new players during pre-season. Not like we've had, we've done before where they're coming in late and then you're not seeing them for the first four or five games because they're trying to get up to speed. They're trying to get up to speed with the tactics and fitness and everything else. We, we, I agree with you. We need to get it done um, early, early this time around, my man. There's but look, a lot that needs to be done. Yeah, a, a hell of a lot that needs to be done, 100%. Well, look, Simon, like we've already kind of discussed 
supporting them, Tottenham, supporting Tottenham, it is like a roller coaster. You know, there's a lot of highs, a lot of lows, especially this season. I have to say, look, you know, up until November, there was a lot of highs after that. It's just been low, nothing but lows. But it, it also, this club also creates bonds with people that that'll never be broken. But what I want to know from you, Simon, is how did you get into supporting Tottenham Hotspur? I I started getting into Spurs. Funny enough, 1967 Cup final when we played Chelsea. That's when I became a, um, well, I was only 10 at the time. I was born in 57, so 67, I was 10. And I remember the Cup final in 67 very well. I know we were, obviously, I know that we did win 2 1. I, I remember Spurs playing in all white and they happened to win the game. So I thought, okay, this team would do for me. And I've been a Spurs fan really since 1967 when I was 10, even though. I did see a few football matches before the 67 Cup final. I was lucky enough, my father took me to my first ever game in 1966, the World Cup at Wembley when England played Mexico and we beat Mexico, maybe 2-0, 2-1. And Bobby Charlton fired at 30 yarder and I remember that very well. That's my first ever game. So I started getting into football in 1966, but started supporting Spurs from 67 after we beat Chelsea in the Cup final. And that's what I've been... Wow. Boy Spurs since really 1967, even though I'd seen England in 66, but I support Spurs since 67. Wow, that's a, that's a long, long time. But look, it's you know, for the time. first 20 or so years, you had you had a lot of uh, a few trophies to be watching Tottenham lift. But come here, you said about England, Mexico. Was there any Mexican waves in the crowd back then? No. <laughs> No, 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 not that I remember. No. no, 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 not that I remember. All I remember, I just remember it vaguely. I remember, obviously, I remember going. I remember Bobby Charlton's goal. I remember it was my father that took me, and that's all I can remember about it. So I was only ten yeah. at the time, so it was, you know, quite a while ago. But I do remember that as being my first ever football match, watching England play Mexico in the World Cup. And as I said, since '67, I saw Spurs beat Chelsea. At home, watching it on TV, and I've been supporting Spurs since '67. And who, 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 who did your father follow? My late father was a Leighton Orient supporter, and his father was a Leighton Orient supporter. You heard of Leighton Orient? You must have heard of the. I have, Orient. I have, I have, I have, yeah. So he was a Leighton Orient fan, and um, it wasn't for me supporting Leighton Orient, even though it would have been stress free, <laughs> more stress free than your- being a Spurs fan. So. Um, yeah, I used to see. I used to go down to, to get away from Spurs. I used to go and see Leighton Orient on a few occasions when I was young with my father, home mm-hmm. games. And then he started taking me to see Spurs play. And then I used to go on my own to see Spurs. I used to go with my friends to see Spurs. And I used to go with my wife to see Spurs. But my late father was a Leighton Orient fan. And they were playing in yeah. whatever division they were playing in. And, you know, it wasn't supporting Leighton Orient. I could have kept going in the family name through my, my dad and his father being Orient fans, but I didn't want to do it. I just, you know, Spurs was for me from since 1967 till, oh, up till now. Yeah, look, with some of the football we're seeing, you may as well, you, you, you may as well be a Leighton Orient fan right now, Simon, you know. <laughs> but um, come here, you were saying about the cup final with Chelsea in 67. Any, any, any particular memories from that day that stood out? Um, I thought it was Frank Saul's winning goal when he swiveled and put it in the corner. I remember that one pretty well. I think um, who scores? For, I think it might be Bobby Townley's goal for Chelsea. But I do remember the uh, the Spurs winning goal. I think it was sure it was Frank Saul swiveling and putting into one into the bottom corner of Chelsea's net. I remember. Yeah, I do remember bits and pieces. But like I said, I was only ten, so we are going yeah. back quite a bit. But I do remember snippets. But obviously, as things started moving on from then, I start things started sinking in a bit more. As we got yeah. started coming, you know, going through the years, the 70s and the 80s, and you know, I do remember more. But I do remember a couple of snippets from the 67 Cup final. I do remember them playing in all white. I do remember the goal scorers. Yeah, a couple of little things, a couple of little things. But that was my first, that's when I started, you know, falling for, falling, you know, for, you know, falling in love with Spurs, yeah. 1967, really. But I did know bits about the double side before then. Even yeah. though I was only, only young, he, my father told me a few snippets about the early 60s. But at 67, it all started taking off. And just just on the, the business side of things, like back then, Simon, was there like replica jerseys like there is now that all the fans go and buy and stuff? Yeah, there was jerseys. Don't ask me what, what, what you know, I know the cockerel was on it and 
maybe a few other things, but I never, I never, never used to buy any tops mm. when I was young. Only like recently, I used to buy buy Spurs replica tops, but not when I was like a little nipper. No. Yeah, and after the '67 Cup final, where you're running around celebrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also, obviously, I was, you know, I was at school at the time, and you know, I was kicking the ball around in the playground with all my friends at school, saying I was this player, was that player. And things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always used to run around. But yeah, 67, it all started for me. And um, were, were you any good at football? And what players did you used to pretend to be? I was very, very good at football. I used to play for my local synagogue synagogue side in the mid-70s. 70, yeah, about 74, 75 season. I used to play for a local football side. I was a centre forward. I used to be like a centre a center forward, like a number, you know, like a number nine. And I was top goal scorer for my team for the, a couple of seasons. I scored about between 35 goals one season and the following season I got 40. But I was all left foot. It was all, yeah. da- all, down, all down to my left foot. I had no right foot at all. I wasn't very good in the air. It was all left foot. I was the best best forward in that league at the time for a couple of seasons. I was a very good player. So what player. you're saying is you're as good as Jimmy Greaves and Clive Allen and no, stuff? No, 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 I didn't, no, no. I didn't have trolls with, it, with anybody, but I was a very yeah. good. I was a very good. I was the best player for my I was the best player for me. I was the best player at school as well. My comprehensive, yeah. my local comprehensive side I was very good, very good footballer there. Very, I was just, a, I was a very good footballer, but I was all left foot and like what, like Pushkus, I suppose. Remember Pushkus, the Hungarian, the yeah. Hungarian player. Yeah, I was like him, all, all left foot and nothing else. But I was a very good player. I was very good. My dad used to watch me, and yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, on, on my debut, if I remember rightly, my debut for my local side, I think I banged in seven. And then Jeez. I got six the following week, five the following week. So I got rattled in about 35, 40 goals in my first season. Had a good following season. So I played football for my local side for a couple of seasons. And then girls started, come a lot, started coming along. And, I, you know, I started not playing football as much. I started dating a bit more. So that was that, really. But I was a very good player. So no, I that's think good. I was, anyway, I had the people say I was very good. So, yeah, yeah, I was pretty good. Look, left-footed players, are, uh, from my experience playing football, left-footed players, they're rare, but they're usually very, very talented. So I'd well believe you, Simon. I'd well believe yeah. you. Yeah, all left foot, all left foot, but it was a good left foot. No, that's what you want, man. That's what you want. But come here. You know, look, you've al- you've already given me the 87 or the, the 67 cup final. You know, I was trying to make you 20 years younger there. Sorry, Simon, but you've already given me the 67 um, um, cup final. But what would be one of the other earliest um, Spurs memories you have? Because, like, for me, like, it was going to the games with the Owlad or, or being brought down to the pub um, with, with the Owlad and the uncle watching the game and I'd be sitting there, you know, watching the game, having me yeah. coke and me pack of crisps. But what would be some of your what, – what would be one of your earliest Spurs memories? Seeing Jimmy Greaves play. I saw Jimmy Greaves play for Spurs. Must have been late, late. Well, yeah, late sixties, late sixties at White Hart Lane. I saw him playing. I'm sure I saw Jimmy Greaves play against Derby. When I think, mm. <coughs> excuse me, saw the ball, put the ball in the halfway line at White Hart Lane. This was against Derby. Beat about three or four players and put it and put it away. I remember that. And I remember also Jimmy Greaves playing for another game, another match. Spurs beat Man United also at White Hart Lane. I think when Man United had Bobby Charlton, Dennis Law, George Best playing. Yeah. I think I remember seeing Jimmy Greaves score against Man United. So I remember seeing Jimmy Greaves on a couple of occasions in the late 60s. And then obviously he moved to West Ham, I think 1970. And Martin Peters, you remember Martin Peters, West Ham player, came the other way? Yeah. Came to Tottenham. And I remember, I do remember very well Martin Peters' debut at home against Coventry. I think this must be 1970 at White Hart Lane. I remember I was behind the goal Martin Peters scored in a Paxton Road end, lower tier. And I was only, what, 13 at the time. So yeah. I think I might have gone on my own to see this game. I remember going in and I made my way down to the front. I was only a little lad, so I made my way down to the front and everybody you know, saw you coming, so they all made a gap so you could go right down to the front, stood behind the goal. And I remember Martin Peters scoring in that goal. I was standing, standing behind, right behind that goal. But... I do know, also do know that we lost 2-1 against Coventry on that day. But yeah. I do remember Martin Peters scoring on his debut. I do remember it pretty well. 
It's one of the memories I do remember of Martin Peters scoring his debut for Spurs against Coventry at White Hart Lane. But we did lose that game. I do remember being wow. behind that goal. A couple of questions to ask you there. But um, just quickly before I do, the, the fact that you were saying you were behind um, behind the goal um, when, the, when the goal went in. Uh, yeah. w- with my old lad, you know, but, um, when we moved um, from England back to Ireland, you know, it was about 15, nearly 15, 20 years before, like, you know, us getting back to the lane. And um, I, I organised it for his 50th birthday. So, you know, a bit special for him, get him over there, get him to a game. And um, it was the year we were in the league one with Leicester. I'm going to say 2016, I think. And um, we were... Um, we were one nil down to Swansea, and we came back and won two one. And we were behind the goal when the winning goal went in. And oh man, it was it was absolutely madness. I I, I was loving life. I was, I was absolutely loving life. It was yeah. brilliant. But come yeah. here, yeah. the Jimmy Greaves. Um, did when watching him back then and the goals he scored. Do you think? Did you think then that his record would last till this present day? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he was that good. Jimmy Greaves was that good. He was Tell us a little bit about Jimmy. Best goal scorer, best, yeah, best goal scorer we've ever had. Best goal scorer I've ever seen play for Spurs. He was a natural goal scorer. Mm. He was always at the right place at the right time. I know Carrie, thinking about like Harry Kane to Jimmy Greaves, Harry Kane was a better, was a better all-round player than Jimmy Greaves. But Jimmy yeah. Greaves was a natural goal scorer. One he of them, he the back knew where the net was. was. And he wasn't a big lad. He wasn't that great in the air, as far as I know, but he was always very clever, good at dribbling, moving it in space. He's just a, a born goal scorer. He knew where the back of the net was. Like with Harry yeah. Kane, he knows where the back of the net was. But he's, Harry Kane's a better all-round player, but Jimmy Greaves is just a born natural goal scorer. But like I said, I only saw him on a couple of occasions in the late 60s. I was mm. only 11, 12 at the time, but I do remember on a couple of games that he did play in. But obviously, I have seen snippets before then of the early 60s. Yeah, when he was the beat when he was the bee's knees, but Jimmy Greaves was, yeah, top. And was top he more top. of a was he more of a goal poacher, like just yeah. you know, kind of always in the box, getting on the end of things, or was right. it was he like what you'd say like Kane is as well? He'd be able to create and stuff like that. Or was he just yeah, more he could of, create? Pure he, goal could create. he could create. He was a clever little player. He could create, you know, find space. Very clever little player. But very good. Very good. Very nimble. Can beat players quite easy. And like I said, near where the back of the net was. He's just a, a top goal scorer. Yeah. Just a top goal scorer, simple as that. He was one of the best goal scorer we've ever, you know we've ever had at the, you know at the club. Do you, was, if Kane think, does yeah. decide to stay, do you think Kane will beat his record? Yeah, no reason why not. Yeah, yeah, no reason yeah. why not. If he stay, if he stays fit, Harry Kane. If he stays fit, there's no reason why he can't do it. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But you know what? That that'd be absolutely mad. The fact that you've seen Jimmy Greaves put that record, and then you know. It, yeah. In your lifetime, you, you might see you, there's potential that you might see someone else to break it as well. You know, albeit so, so, so uh, you've had to wait um, nearly 50, 60 years for it, you know. But yeah, you know, it, it's mad to say that that you can see someone put up the record and then, you know, in your lifetime, you get to see someone else that is just as good at finding the net and, and breaking it. It's, it's insane, yeah. my man. It's insane. You're, 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 you're lucky. You're lucky to see the no, great lucky, Jimmy Reeves, the great lucky. Harry Kane. Yeah, you know? yeah, lucky. I've been. Oh, I've seen some very some super. You know, because obviously me playing <coughs> centre forward football when I, when I used to play as a nipper. Forward, you know, centre forwards have always been my favourite players over the years at Spurs. Yeah, I'm not into centre halves, midfielders. It's always been. I'm. I like the forward, forward, centre forwards, and kind of play. So I used to be a centre forward. So I used to see going back. I used to see before Jimmy. You know, um, after Jimmy Greaves, with people like Martin Chivers, also one of my favourite players. Martin Chivers, yeah. top player. And people even also other people, that, you know, further along the line, like Mark Falco was also a very good player. Yeah. I remember seeing Mark Falco in the early 80s. And he scored some super goals. And there's like, used to be Garth Crooks as well. Also another yeah. good little forward. So I've seen Spurs have always had very good centre forwards. They really have. Up until like Harry Kane now and Jurgen Klinsmann. I think Klinsmann has been my favourite ever player. I think he's been my number, you know, my number, you know, my number one. I said, who's your favourite all-time Spurs player? I'd say Klinsman. Do you remember his diving celebration to, uh, to answer the papers back after everything they're accusing him of diving and everything? Then he does I the diving celebration. That. I remember that day vaguely because we, the day Spurs played Sheffield Wednesday away when we won four three and Klinsman got that goal and he done that dive. I remember. I think we were having a family day out that day. I think we went to um, 
a local zoo with the fan with the kids at the time yeah. and i had the radio up against my ears so i was listening to the game at the same time I, I remember that i remember the day pretty well that day that we beat sheffield wednesday that was brilliant yeah. that was Clinton with that super goal he got but he was a top yeah. player no, that's brilliant. Yeah, no. My Ola was a huge Jor uh, Jorgen Klingsman fan as well. He used to absolutely mm. adore the guy. But come yeah. here, you were saying, you know, you're not into midfielders and defenders and stuff like well, that. Well, I am. I am. I am. But I am. I am. I am, in, I am. Don't get me wrong. I do like, you know, like the hoddles, people like that. And obviously, yeah. Ozzy Ardine Ar comes to mind. And Gascon. I mean, that's some super plays in midfield. Don't get me wrong. But me being, a, like I said, me playing football when I was a lot younger as a centre forward... I've yeah. always like putting the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. So I like, but the, I like but you know, put the ball the, in the The reason back why I say it is because, uh, look, everyone knows I listen to like all, all podcasts. I listen to a lot of football podcasts, a lot of players talking about their time. Yeah. And every striker has that mentality. And you have that mentality where it's all about the goals. It's all about the striker. Sure, it's goals win know. matches, though. Goals win matches. That's it. You can't put no, the ball in it. the I back agree. of the net. I win. But I have to say, I'm a bit upset with you because you didn't mention the great Irish man, Robbie Key. Robbie Keane. You know, I spent many a day, sorry, I spent sorry, many a day like, scoring a goal, doing a cartwheel. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Robbie doing Keane. a cartwheel after, giving it the guns. You know, I'm disappointed you didn't mention no, the great no, Robbie Keane. No, sorry, Keane. no. Robbie Keane, my fault. No, you're totally, you're totally right there. I do apologise. But Robbie Keane was also one of my favourite players. I do remember, yeah, Robbie Keane, I do. He's also a super little player. I was glad he joined Spurs. I really did. He was a top yeah. player, Robbie Keane. He really was. No. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy and privileged yeah. that I got to grow up and see that guy in a white shirt because not only for Tottenham but you know for Ireland as well you know he holds the goal scoring record for Ireland he, you know he, he was absolutely brilliant on his day he, was. He, 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 he knew where the net was as well he was. but yeah. like you know just, just, just quickly Simon before I get on to the next question right so for me when I used to score goals, I used to give it the Robbie Keane celebration around Ireland. You'd see me doing little cartwheels and giving it the old, the, the old, um, you know, ball to the crowd and everything else, the old guns. But yeah. you, you said you scored a lot of goals. Was there any celebrations you used to do that you used to see players do? I just used to run back to the halfway, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'd run back to halfway line and, and get ready for kickoff. No, I don't remember any. I couldn't do any cartwalks <laughs> or somersaults. God, no. <laughs> No, no, I couldn't do none of that. As soon as I scored, I used to just, you know, go back to the halfway line and wait for the opposition to kick off. No, there was no, there was no, you know, jigging about or flipping <laughs> over or anything like that. Couldn't do none of that. God, <clears throat> blimey. No, no, well, I, I wasn't into that. I wasn't into that at all. No celebration. And being a star man, did you have a nice haircut being up front? Short. <laughs> it was short. <laughs> I used to play with white, I remember playing with white boots. White, yeah. I had white boots, white boots. My first, yeah. my first, my first um, football boots were coloured white. So I used to play nice. with white boots. I used to play with white boots. I remember my white boots, yeah. Yeah, because I used to play with the bigger, you know, le you know, the leather football and all that, which was heavy. Yeah. But I used to play with white, white football boots. But, I remember. Uh, yeah. I, I remember growing up, right? So up until I think it was like 12, 13, my yeah. old lad, he always just used to get me black boots. You know, and look, it's an Irish thing. You know, all Irish players back then, never really any fancy boots. Roy Keane just played in normal black Diodoras and off he yeah. went, black Diodoras at the time. But, you know, one day he brought me out to get new boots and, you know, he was looking at all these black boots and I was just drawn to these white boots and I was like, I want them, I want them, I want them. Yeah. And I just said to him, look, I want these ones. You know, <laughs> and the owl was there, oh, you want to be a show pony, you want to be this, you want to be that. And I was just like, no. I just like the white boots. That's what I want on my feet. You know what I mean? And I, I, I used to love the white boots. I, and to this day, I still wear white boots. So, you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it, I don't know what yeah. it is, but like, like you, I have an attraction to a pair of white boots, my man. Yeah, I used but to look, play with white boots. I do. I did, yeah. What, what was the brand back then? <sighs> Honestly, don't know. I can't remember. Tell you the truth, I don't remember, Dave. I can't remember the brand. Yeah. I really can't. All I know is I yeah. played with white boots. What are on the side of them? I honestly don't know. I can't, I can't and remember. Did you used to come home and clean them after every match? My mum. <laughs> <laughs> my mum used to clean. My mum used to clean them until she got fed up with it. And he said, right, you know, you clean your own boots. So I used to clean my own boots after a while. But my mum used to do it. I used to bring the kit home and she used to throw it straight in the washing machine. So she used to, you know, she used to clean the boots, do my washing for me. But after a while, I thought, oh, you know, I've got to clean my own boots. 
Yeah. Some of the pitch, no, some I was of the always made clean my own boots, Simon. I was always made clean my own boots. Because we used to play on some really horrendous pitches. We used to play over at Hackney Marshes sometimes. Hackney oh, yeah. Marshes. Yeah. In East London, Hackney Marshes. You'd have heard of Hackney Marshes. Yeah. Used to play a lot of games over that way. So used to have lots of pitches, and some of the pitches were terrible because obviously used to play in the winter. She used to come back with muddy boots, muddy kit and everything. So as soon as I got home, it was like in the washing machine and the boots used to get clean, which my mother used to do for a while until I used to do it after that. But yeah, yeah no, used, to play Hackney I, Marshes. used to play at Hackney Marshes quite a bit. No, nah, that's mad. But um, no, I, 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 you know, I was always made clean my own boots, but my mind used to go mad. Because like that over here with the rain and everything, as you'd be playing on some 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 pitches, some of the yeah, times it wasn't even grass, pitches, yeah. it was just mud and water. I mean, yeah. I used to go mad with my shorts and socks coming home and everything else. But look, you know, what is it? Like, I, I, I know you said, uh, you know, the 60, the 67 FA Cup final with Chelsea is, 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 you know, what got you into supporting Tottenham. But what That's is it about watching that game or what is it about Tottenham that made you fall in love with Tottenham? Tottenham? And said, "This is my club." Because, like you said, you know, a lot of your family's late in Orient. So, what made you pick Tottenham? What made you fall in love with it? Well, like I said, obviously, you know, the history, of the early sixties. I've told about that, the double winning side, and they won the um, cup. They won the cup winners in um, 63, 64, round about then as well. So, they had, Spurs have always had good history, you know, before I was born. So, um, like I said, sixty-seven come along. Saw the Spurs Chelsea game, like the way they played. Obviously, they won, like the kit, the all white kit. I've always loved Spurs playing in all white. Yeah. So it just really started from there. But obviously, there was a lot of history with Spurs before I, you know, before I was born, and you know, like I said, the early sixties and before that as well, with the Arthur O push and run side and Bill Nicholson with a double winning side. And obviously, being a club in London, which wasn't too far from where I used to live, and you know. Jimmy Greaves and things like, you know, there, there was a lot why I chose, there was a lot of reasons why yeah. I chose Spurs, you know. It's, it's yeah. the club for me, as simple as that. I could not change my club, even if someone said, you know, here's a few Bob ch-. No, I'm so sorry, I'm a, I'm, I bleed blue and white. It's like my son, my son takes after me, he's a Spurs fan. He's 34, yeah. coming on 35. He's a Spurs fan, he's found it hard, obviously, because he hasn't seen anything on the trophy mm-hmm. front by one. But um, Spurs yeah. is Spurs is in my DNA, Dave. It's in my DNA. No, look, I, I've never ever questioned that. Uh, you, you know, anyone that doesn't know Simon, you know, if you don't know him to see, you definitely know his name because he was in every Spurs channel in in all the chats. You know, nothing but nice to people, an absolute great guy. And um, I'm never in doubt. You know, I, I know you bleed blue and white, my man. I know. And um, you know, I was actually saying to Simon off air, it's. So like likes of him, Arthur, Philip Brady, me old lad, people like that that I feel I feel sorry for because you know they they've watched this club lift trophies, they've watched this club um, you know be successful and and history and to see what's going on now, it has to be like for me it's hard but for you guys it has to be double as hard knowing what we once were and it, it, it's I, I I don't know it's just it's very very sad times. It's but look, Simon, we spoke, we spoke a lot about players. But who was your favourite ever player to put on the Spurs jersey? And before I ask, you know, I do tell you that you look like David Ginola. Oh, yeah, I wish. I wish. I wish. Your eyes. That's why I wear glasses. My eyes are bad. Yours must be worse. <laughs> I've seen some great players. In my life, so I've seen some, I've got quite, you know, Klinsman's my number one. But obviously there's some others. Like I said, obviously, Harry Kane at the moment. Gareth Bale. When he was at Spurs first time around, Martin Chivers, I was very fond of. Mm. Um, also, remember, obviously, Pat Jennings. I've forgotten about mentioning about yes. Pat Jennings. He was the best best goalkeeper we've goalkeeper. ever had by a long way. He was a super goalkeeper. Um, Brian Roberts, Stevie Perryman. There's been lots and lots and lots of players, but I, I, you know, if someone said, right, come on, who is your top top player for Spurs of all time? It'd have to be Klinsman. As simple as that. We just wait. Well, it was it was you know a, you know a world a, like a world beat. It was like one of the best players in the world, you know, when he was in his pomp and things like that. It was just you know him and like so I remember him and Sheringham playing together. That was you know a great partnership. But um, yeah, Jurgen Klinsmann, like I said, also like Chris Cowley mentioned Jurgen Klinsmann. So I'm on the yeah. same page with Chris Cowley. Jurgen Klinsmann has been my favourite ever, you know, favourite ever Spurs player. Not the best. But what you know, but yeah. my favourite player, one of the best, 
Harry Kane's a better a better round player than Klinsman. Mm. But um, for whatever reason, you know, Jürgen Klinsmann, you know, I managed to get his autograph as well. So that was no a privilege to get that. He used to go, went down once to, um, he used to train at Mill Hill, Tottenham, mm. down in London, near Brent Cross Shopping Centre, Finchley Way. And me and my wife went down there one day when you can go in and watch the team train. And Jürgen Klinsmann was there, had a, had a, you know, went in with a leather football and he managed to sign it, had a little chat with him. So, you know, Klinsman, yeah. You still have that to this day? Play. No, I don't. Sorry, I don't know. I gave it away to... No, I gave it away, funny enough. Yeah. But um, he was, yeah, he was a super player and he was a very nice guy. Very intelligent yeah. guy. You know, he talked to you, you know. When you can talk to players, you know, at the time, you're allowed into training grounds, you can talk to the players. Not like now, where you can't even get anywhere near them. But you could speak and to the course, players. Look, he came know. back and saved the club from relegation, didn't he? He did. He did indeed. So there you go. If he didn't come back, we could have got a relegate again. So um, I know we went down in the 70s. So Klinsman didn't come back second time around because they say don't go back. But thank God he did come back. Because he might have yeah. got relegated. I remember that season very well when things were going Pete Tong at the time. And Sugar says, right, come back. I want you to come back. And he, you know, saved us. I remember I think he scored a, maybe two or three goals in one of our last games against Crystal Palace away. They got us the points to keep us up. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. Klin, Jürgen Klinsmann, but there's like you said, there's Robbie. There's 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 loads. There's there's loads yeah. of players who play. Steve Archibald, Garth Crook, Graham Roberts. I said Pat James, Martin Chivers, even Alan Gill was in. There's been loads. Ozzy Ardell. This has been. We've had some super players playing for this club since I've been supporting them. I really, yeah. you know, top players. And we've got, you know, it's a shame we don't have so many top players playing for Spurs now. We've got what two or three, four at the most, or whatever. But in, in, you know, when I used to follow them a lot in the 80s, home and away, we had, you know, a whole team of real top players. Yeah. Not like now what we watch at Spurs. Yeah. No, and do you know what? It's interesting that you mentioned about, like, you know, the players in the team now, because I was just about to say to you, I don't really hear you saying too many um, players from this modern day team or this modern day era. And, oh. and <clears throat> but I, I fully understand why. I fully understand but why. But Harry Kane, OK, listen, just what Harry Kane, he's the best we got. And then you've got Son. Loris is a very good goalkeeper. you got Holberg. And then you think, right, OK. And then, but we, uh, the best team I've seen recently at Spurs was the last team, what, the last season we played at White Hart Lane that year when we went yes. undefeated at White Hart Lane in whatever yeah. year that was. We had Ericsson, Moussa Dembele, Rose and Walker. That was the best Spurs side I've seen since the 80s, the early 80s. Yeah. It was a very good side when we should have gone on and won something then. Because we had Vertonghen, yeah. we had a bad of our old Deli Alley when he was really up on his game. He's, you know, it was, that was a very, very, when Yama, Dyer, even Dyer yeah. looked quite good in midfield. We had a, we and Harry Kane started, started round about then or whenever it was. We had a yeah. very good team then, Dave. Yeah, we you did. Know, we did, but without winning a trophy. But now you think of the top players we've got now, there's only a couple of the red of dead wood. Yeah, a hundred percent. But you, you were saying uh, I've I've two questions to ask you, but I'll ask you this one first, and I'll go back to another one on Jurgen. But you were saying now that we should have won something um, uh, um, that season or, or kicked on from that team and won something, and then you were t comparing it like you know, saying it's the best team you've seen since the eighties. What do you think the te the difference is between them two teams? Do you think it's mentality? Do you think it's determination? Oh, think what, what is it? mentality? Mentality, mentality all over in the eighties. We had it mentality. Right up there, not like now. We had players, we had, like I said, we had the Roberts, we had the Miller, we had the Perrimans, we had the Chris Hutons, mm. we had the Tony Galvin, used to run down up and down the um, touch line with his socks down, he used to give it all that. <laughs> but now we've, we've got players now, I'm more worried about what the hairs look like, what cars they're driving. We just haven't got you know, some of the players in the team these days, it's just more interesting picking up their wages in the early 80s. They were just, they, they, they were, we're the right team. The right mentality. They wanted to go out, win as many games as possible, and win trophies. It was brilliant in the early eighties. It was brilliant. It really yeah. was. It really was. But now we just got players, you know, just laugh and joke on the pitch. Mm. It's not not like it used to be. I know I keep banging on about the eighties, but the eighties to me was the best time being a Spurs fan. Yeah. No, look, and this is what it this was. is about, you know, to listen to your stories, listen to your favorite generations, it favorite really players, was. and everything else. This is what it's about, but. Going back to Jorgen, just one more question on Jorgen. Um, it was it was a massive shock when he came in. Of course, being a World Cup winner, everyone was like, what's he doing going to Tottenham? 
How shocked were you that he came to Tottenham at the time? Shocked. Very shocked. Came out of the blue. Yeah. He came out of the blue at the time. Yeah, it really did. It came out of the uh, blue. And, it, and I don't know if you've seen the other day. Oh, mate, he put a smile on my face. He certainly put a smile on my face that day. As soon as, as, soon as Jürgen Klinsmann joined, the first thing I'd done, if you remember rightly, was getting on the phone, phoning my father up, who was at work at the time. And I said, guess what? He said, well, what? I said, guess what? He said, well, go on. Are you going to tell me or not? Jürgen Klinsmann. Yeah, what about him? He signed for Spurs. And he said, really? He was that surprised. I said, yeah, seriously, I'm not yeah. joking. Jürgen Klinsmann signed for Spurs. And I must admit, I must have been bouncing off the walls as soon as he signed for Spurs. That really, that was the, one of the best things that ever happened to me, being a Spurs fan, was Jürgen Klinsmann joining our club. It was yeah. brilliant. It really was. And I used to love him and Teddy Sheringham playing together. You know, it's, it's like Son and Kane, Archibald and Crooks, Klinsman, Chivers and Gilzine, then kind of double acts. It was really, you know, watching Klinsman and Sheringham play together, it was brilliant. But Klinsman, superb, superb player. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I was privileged enough to watch him a couple of times. But, um, you know, with Jürgen, of course, he came out the other day and said the best time of his life was at Tottenham. That's right. It's insane, that, isn't it? Well, he played Inter, he played Inter Milan, didn't he, as well? He's yeah. done very well there. But no, Monaco, no, no. He's played at a lot of big clubs. He's played, oh, yeah, well, that's how good he was, Monaco. Yeah, he's, he, you know, and obviously played for the national side. But Jürgen Klinsmann was, you know, a, you know, a top a top player. But like I said, we've, you know, we've had top players, what we still have with Harry Kane. But Klinsmann, yeah, Klinsmann then, Harry Kane now, Martin Chivers before, Jimmy Greaves, people like that. And obviously, Robbie Keane was very good. We've seen some very good players at Spurs over the years. It says, unfortunately, recently, we haven't seen trophies being lifted. Yeah. But that's the way it is said. at the moment. the way the club's going at the moment. So, Daniel Levy, if you're watching this, do something about it. No. Look, at the end, at the end, I'll give you I'll give you time to send a message out to Levy if you want. Um, but look, we've spoke about players. What about your favourite ever manager? Birkinshaw. Keith Birkinshaw, early 80s, banging on about the early 80s again. You know, well, we won a couple of Tell me more about him, man. Sorry? Tell me more about him. Well, well he came from, well, he came, he was, he came, he was born, he came from Yorkshire, I believe. And um, he got us our dealers and Ricky Vera in the 78 season. He was just, he was just a very, he was just a very good manager. He was very good at, you know, tactics and everything. He knew what he wanted. Got the best out of players. We had a good team playing for him, and um, he won us trophies. He was just a very, just a very good, humble guy. Very good manager. You know, knew what he wanted, and you know, he, he got, you know, got the best out. You know what we had, and um, obviously bringing over our dealers and Via was the icing on the cake for us to win trophies. So mm. yeah. Keith Birkinshaw, and obviously Pochettino comes, you know, second, obviously, for the football league we used to play under him. That's a shame we didn't win trophies under Pochettino, but if he comes back, you never know, we might do. But Keith Birkinshaw in the early 80s was when I used to really, you know, like watching Spurs because we used to go, you know, home and away in the early 80s, me and my wife. So we used to, you know, used to follow Spurs a lot in the 80s. But Is Keith she a just as much as you? Sorry? She, yeah, she yeah, yeah, just as much as you. Yeah, we used to go, you know, we used to go see Spurs home and away in the 80s. We used to go up to like see away games up in up in Birmingham, like the Villas, the Forest, the Wolves, the yeah. Stoke, Birmingham, teams like that. We used to go and see it in West Brom. Oh, I used to see Spurs quite a lot away in the, in the early 80s. So we had some very good times. We really did. But um, yeah, I keep banging on about the past. You should look at, you know, look forward a bit now. But which, you know, I will do as soon as we know who we got as manager, who goes and who comes in mm. player-wise. And I just hope we have a new, you know, a new generation of a Spurs side that can go on and start winning cups again. You know, but it has been yeah. hard for the last 20 odd years. It's been a bloody nightmare seeing finals, you, seeing playing against Liverpool in the Champions League Cup final. As soon as Sissoko gives the penalty away and they score, you thought, game over. As soon as Man City scored the other, you know, a couple of months ago, game over. You always know, as soon as we go one down in cup finals, you know, we've lost. Because they yeah. just haven't got the mentality to, you know, <laughs> turn it around. Yeah. You know, but like I said, early 80s, they used to turn it around quite a lot. We used to, you know, against Andlecht in the 84-85 cup yeah. final, the UEFA Cup. You know, we, we dug Two that one out. Two-legged affair back so, then as well, home and away. Yeah. 
Yeah, I used to, like I said, I've seen Spurs a lot home and away in the 80s. I used to see them against the Arsenal home and away. Yeah. I remember one game in the 80s, might be 1980, when we beat Arsenal at home 5 0 at White Hart Lane. Mark Falco scored a blinder of a goal, a 25 yard, 30 yard volley. I was behind that goal. We beat them 5 0 that day at home. Alan Brazil used to play for Spurs. I think scored Chris Hutton scored for us on that day as well. So, yeah, yeah, the early 80s. You know, yeah. put a lot of smiles on my faces. But like I said, now, not so much. Even though we've got Harry Kane and Son, which is good. But we still haven't got enough to kick on to win things, 100%. I'm afraid. 100%. And we've nowhere near enough to kick on either. No, we, look, haven't. Simon, we haven't. Look, you know, Tottenham have been involved in many th- um, um, thrillers down the years, you know. Many, no, many great games down the years. You, cool. you, you, like, you, you have... Um, you have the Ajax game the way it happened. You know, you oh, have um, you have the Gareth Bale destroying um into Milan o- over two legs. You have um, you have um, oh, what's his uh, Paul Gascoigne? You know, against yeah, Arsenal that free kick yeah. in the semi final. David Ginola, yeah. another yeah. great player involved in some great games. But what's your favourite yeah. ever game? Uh, what game will you always remember and why? <sighs> uh, one game comes to mind is obviously a couple of games come to mind. Is like I said, Spurs Arsenal when we beat him 5 0, Mark Falco, that wonderful volley. And that uh, games against Arsenal when we drew 4 all, when David Bentley scored that goal. Yes. Um, another game when we beat Arsenal away, I think 3 2, when Van der Vaart took a free kick and Eunice Gabor got his head on it. We beat him 3 2. Another game comes to mind, I think, when we played Chelsea. I can't remember what season. I think we drew four all when Berbatov scored towards the end when it was, we were losing against Chelsea at White Hart Lane. The game ended four yeah. four. Every game against Arsenal where we don't lose has been, you know, my top games. Obviously the Ajax in the semi final. If only that was the final. If that was the final. That would have been the greatest night ever being a Spurs fan beating Ajax. Yeah. If that was a final. That would have been the tops. But unfortunately, it was a semi final. But that did bring a few tears to my eyes on that on that night. It was that good. Yeah. I've seen I've seen some I've seen some super I've seen some super games, you know, against Arsenal when we didn't lose Chelsea when you know beating them in the Worthington Cup. Mm. Um, like I said the I get I gets game. There's been plenty. There's been plenty. Of, there's been plenty. There's been plenty of games, top games. Being a Spurs fan watching them, it really has. Yeah, no, there's the, the, been many one. Interestingly, you mentioned the Bentley goal. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. that one will always stick out in my mind. The sheer audacity to have a goal from where he did, and of course he came through the Arsenal ranks as well. That's right. I think it was a Harry. I think it was Harry Redknapp's first game, wasn't it? Harry Redknapp was in charge, and it might have been his yeah. first game. I know we were losing, and um, was it Gina or Aaron Lennon scored the fourth goal, to, so we could equal four four. But I remember, um, I, rem- I remember that. Yeah. I remember that game. I do. I do remember that David. I said anything David Bentley done when he was scored that goal against Arsenal, yeah. but that was good enough. That was good enough for me. So I do remember uh, that. Like I said, the Arsenal games, a lot of Arsenal games come to mind that we didn't lose. And obviously the yeah. Man City, Man City Cup final replay when Ricky Villa scored. There's, there's been lots of memories. It has been lots of memories being a Spurs fan. A lot of good, and at the moment, a lot of bad. Yeah, hundred percent. Um. But look, we 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 we've spoken about players. You you know we we know you love strikers. We know you're a striker yourself. What's your favourite ever goal that's been scored in the Spurs jersey? Well, there's been well, there's been so many. Like I said, there's been so many. I keep saying about this Mark Falco goal against Arsenal in 1980 when yeah. we beat him five nil. That was a superb goal. A few Harry Kane goals against the Arsenal. That David Bentley goal against the Arsenal. Um, well, there's been this. Oh, there's been there's been Jimmy Grease running from the halfway line against Derby, beating two or three players and putting the ball away. There's been you know there's been there's been so there's been a couple of Ricky Villa blockbusters from 20 25 yards, a few few goals he used to score. There's been lot, lots of super goals. You know, Son's goal the season just gone against the Arsenal when he called it in when yeah. he beat two 0 That was the, my favourite goal of the season for Spurs. Harry Kane's corner. Uh, against Harry, Arsenal, remember that one? Harry Kane's curry. Oh, that was brilliant when he had the mask yeah, on. When he had his mask on. <laughs> when he had the mask on, wasn't it? When he called it in at the Paxton Road yes. He threw, went to the corner flag. I think threw his mask off. 
Yeah, protecting yeah. Martin. So that was brilliant as well. But it's been, it's been. I must admit, there's been a few games that brought tears to my eyes. You know, over the years, you know, happiness. But unfortunately, at the moment, not so much. But yeah, there's been some great memories being a Spurs fan. With some of these goals yeah. that we scored over the years. But Mark Falcons is your favourite. Mark Falcons against one Arsenal of them. One favorite. of them. Yeah, we're beating the Arsenal five 0 That was a brilliant goal. Sometimes I put YouTube on and look at it again. It's a brilliant goal that Mark Falco go. If you yeah. get a chance, YouTube it. Mark Falco. 5-0 at home to Arsenal, I think in 1980 at White Hart Lane. It was a super goal. I remember, I couldn't believe it when that went in because we, me and my wife at the Paxton Road end, upper tier, had a seat and it cost about a fiver each. So that was cheap. That was a yeah. brilliant goal. But there's been some great, there's been some great goals. Great, obviously some great goals. I'd say you, I'd say you went nuts night. that night though, did you? I'd say you had a I good right, 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 right to party. Yeah, yes, right. I used to come out the ground run down the um, high street to the local chip shop, which I think is still there next to the White Hart Lane station, stop off and get our saveloy chips, go back to the car, sit in the car, have our saveloy chips or fish and chips. And off we went. We used to stop off at the fish and chip shop many a time after a lot of Spurs home games, the shop next to White Hart Lane. I didn't know if you've seen it when you were down yeah. there. It's a fish and chip yeah. shop next yeah. to White Hart Lane station. We used to stop off there on the way home from watching the match and it used to be, you know, we used to, used, to, used to be really good. It used to be really good when we used to see Spurs win and stop off for some fish and chips on the way home. We used to make, you know, get a couple of drinks and all that. It was really good. Yeah, yeah some good no, times. It's a very good time. It's, very, it's a very good, yeah, like I said, not so many now, but <laughs> what can you do? Hopefully they'll come back. Yeah. I really do. For your yeah. sake and, and and Ben and Sim and all the younger younger brigade. Yeah. <laughs> it, must be, it must be painful for you lot watching it at the moment. It's it must be painful. It's painful going to the dentist, going to the dentist and getting a, a, to a tooth extracted, watching this a lot. Oh, it is, it is. But you know why it's 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 especially painful is because we've been on the cusp. We've been on the cusp and it just hasn't happened. I'm starting yeah. to feel like it's a curse. You know what I mean? And 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 that's what I worry about because you know some of these curses can go for another 20, exactly. 30 years, you know what it's I mean? So curse, yeah. It's a curse. I just, I just want to see some of the trophies that you've seen Tottenham lift. You know, I want to see us lift some of them. That's what I want, Simon. And that's why it's I, frustrating for me, man. Oh, of course, it's frustrating. For, it's, it's frustrating for the youngsters these days. You like I said yourselves, Ben and Simon, all the younger lot who haven't, you know, only seen one trophy in what twenty odd years or wherever it's been, yeah. and seen cup finals. You know, losing cup finals against Liverpool and. You know, Manchester F City, FA Cup semi-finals, FA Cup semi-finals. You know, I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember one semi final. I think it was against Chelsea. Well, I think Pochettino was in charge, and he played Human Song at left back in the semi final. Yes. What was all that yeah. about? No, I don't. I didn't get that, and we lost what four, five, two. We got well beat, well beat that yeah. day. But it'd be nice to go to a cup final and th you know and win it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, no, I it? fully agree. I fully agree. It's all we want. Levy, it's all us fans want is to be able to lift trophies. Please give us the tools to do it. But look, That's Simon, right. what does this club mean to you? Everything. After my family, everything. My family come first, first come second. Simple. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I've been supporting, listen, Dave, I've been supporting Spurs for, I'm 63, I've been supporting Spurs since, what, 67 to... 10 years, so I've been supporting Spurs for about 52, 53 years, so that's how, I've, you know, I've supported Spurs longer than I know my wife, so it means it means a lot to me, it really does, every day I'm, I'm always thinking about Spurs, yeah. never, never, every day I'm coming down in the morning for, with my having my breakfast, I put the TV on, catch up with one of your channels, if I don't watch it the night before, watch Chris Cowling's updates, watch Brian Daigle, who's, I think, superb, watch him, with Brian Ireland also, you know, superb, and Stelios yeah. and, and the other chap who works with him, Chai, they're very good, and Will and um, Cody. I watch all those kind of channels. So every day I'm always watching the Spurs channel because yeah. I need my fix. I need my fix. Yeah. I really do. If I don't get my fix of Spurs on a daily basis, I could be a sod to live with. Ask my wife. So even though the season's finished, I still like my little fix. Yeah. So talking to you is brilliant because you're a great chap. Great chat, blah, blah, blah. So that's my fix for the day. And then tomorrow, I'll probably have to see what's on YouTube, catch, see what other shows have been put on the night before, like tonight or whatever. Well, I'll tell you, stuff. tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, I know I won't be putting this out till Monday, but tomorrow, Simon, uh, we are recording this Saturday for anyone that wants to know, but 
tomorrow I will be doing um, you know, a um, a players rating um from the season. So if you need man, well, I players right, a players tomorrow. rating from the season. Well, Son and Kane, what Son <laughs> nine, Kane ten, and then you <laughs> you might as well just rate them, rate them to maybe Loris and Holberg and skip the rest. <laughs> no, <laughs> play rating that won't take you long. It's only about three or four. You can write the rest of them. Don't bother with stick them in the bin. Put them out with the bin no. men next week. <laughs> no, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree with you, right? But my players' rating. Ben Sin done one the other day. I think they must have been on for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> players' rating. No. Christ Almighty. <laughs> A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But you know, yeah. it. I for me, I need to analyze it. You know, I won't be happy until analyze I can sit down and give the That's painful. That's painful analyzing players' ratings for the season. Some of them players, the Dyes and the Sanchez and the Oreos. <laughs> I'll skip them and move on to Son and Kane, Loris and Oldberg. Forget the rest. Hundred <laughs> percent. So there you are. Simon's just. Don't bother going back and rewatching the players' rating video. Simon has just bother. summed it up perfectly. Don't take it personally, Dave, but players' ratings, Jesus. No, 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 no. Daniel, uh, yeah, do a Daniel Levy rating. Zero. Yeah, I, I, I need to do one of them, actually, so yeah, I do. Enoch, do, an Enoch, do an Enoch rating over the last 20-odd years. What I'll do is I'll go through all the board members and everything, and I'll find out, like, you know, I, I, I'll... I'll, I'll uh, compare what they've done for the club and what their job description is, and I rate yeah. them on it. That's what I'll do, Simon. But come yeah, here, my man. Come here. Um, you know, it, honestly, it's been a great show, man. You've made me smile. You've made me laugh. You've cheered That's me up. That's right. Good. Um, but I have one more question, and it's a question I, I, I love to end on. Look, my most cherished Spurs memory would be would be being able to repay my father from all them years he brought me to Lane as a kid, when he could have easily just fucked me off and brought you know went with the lads. And everything else, he always brought me with him. Um, you know, to be able to pay him back after being in exile um, for, for for a number of years from the lane, to be able to bring him back from his 50th, watch him celebrate in amongst the crowd like he was a, um, a kid again, putting a smile on his face. That would be one of my most ever cherished Spurs memories. What What is your most cherished memory? My son being a Spurs fan. Not supporting anybody else, being a Spurs fan, going through the bad and you know the good and the bad, but mainly it's mainly been bad. But he's still been, you know, still sticks with supporting Spurs. So he's following in my footsteps. Being a Spurs fan, he loves Spurs as much as I do. So my son, obviously, when I'm you know pass away, my son will still be, you know, carrying the flag, blue and white Spurs flag. So you know, he'd be you know, he carry on in the family as a Spurs, you know, as a Spurs fan. So I'm glad it's going down. Another generation, because I've got yeah. two granddaughters who, you know, are not into football. So really, my son's going to fly the flag for me when I've gone, being a Spurs, you know, a Spurs fan to the rest, you know, for his, you know, rest of his days. So yeah, yeah, it's. I'm glad my son's not like an Arsenal fan. He's a Spurs fan, which is brilliant. So he'd be carrying, no, the, he'd, be carrying the, he'd be carrying the flag after I've gone, the blue That's and white the flag. Best answer. That is the best answer I've had to that question. That's all I can say, you know, like I said, I do, you know. I love him to bits. We follow Spurs home and away mm. when we can. So, um, yeah, like I said, I want to see a smile on his face when we see Spurs win a trophy. No. You know. well, one thousand percent. And, you know, honestly, that's the best answer I've had to that question. That's the sort of answer, you know, I, I, I'm looking for. Honestly, Simon, it's it's been a, it, it's been a, a great, great interview. To be honest with you, you have to give me an idea. I'd love to do one with you and your son at one stage together. If you've ever had time, oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, no, yeah, he's not. He's, he's not a member of your channel. But is that is that okay if he comes on with me sometime? You don't mind? One hundred percent, man. Up? Look, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. What I would love to do is organise for you and your son to sit down together in the same room, and That's you fine. know, we we do we do we do another one of these where the two of you can share your memories together, like, you know, going, if you've gone to games and stuff like that together. No, we've gone to loads of, to loads of games together, loads of games together. Loads of games together. He bleeds blue and white like me, Dave. No, I'd well believe yeah. it. He does. I'd well he believe it. Blue and white like me. So, yeah, if you could do that. And also, before I go, are we going to do a show sometime with Arthur and um, the other chap you were saying? Yes, that's sure. Um, 
I'll speak. What we'll do is, I'll just finish off this, and I'll speak yeah. to you after my man about that. But 100, um, that that is coming out Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, so we'll be doing that Tuesday, 100. Yeah, that's but fine, look, Simon. Okay. You have been an incredible guest. Thank I'm you so very glad much, that you know I've got you from being behind the name to getting your face. You know what I mean? Out here, you've been. You know I love speaking to you anytime you come on. You I know, always I know, cheer me up. You know, I, know. I, I find you very, very funny. And I want to say a massive thank you've you. You've got to be. You've got to be these days, ain't the way things are going out in the world. You've got to be, you know, got to be, you know, got to have a bit of a sense of humour. You get you through it. And being a first man as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exa exactly. You've got to have a sense being of humour if you're a Sometimes fan. things doubly as hard. Being a Spurs fan, you need a sense of humour or else you're um, buggered. Oh, 100%. But look, I want to say a personal thank you on behalf of the, the Harris Army and myself, of course, you know, okay. for giving up your time and doing this. Oh, I, I, I've really enjoyed this. Super. Thanks very much for having me on, Dave. I really appreciate it. No, oh, no, no problem. No problem I'm at all. It's been, it's, it. it's, the pleasure is all mine. I've really enjoyed Good. this. You put out a great story. I really appreciate it, man. I really do. Okay. Um, okay. I just... I just want to say to everybody else out there, I hope you have enjoyed this week's episode. Um, if you did, make sure you do smash the like button. Make sure you smash the subscribe button if, if you're new and tuning into the channel. Also, don't be afraid to hit that notification bell, you know, so that um, every, every time I put out a new video, you will get notified. I want to say a big thank you to Simon for coming on and sharing his memories. I want to say a thank you to the Harris Army and anyone else for tuning in. Um, and before I say until next time, Simon, do you want to send out a, a message to Levy? Spend some money on some players, Levy, and get rid of the dead wood, please. If not, then leave. There you are, short and simple, the way we like it here. You know, straight to the point. Big up, yeah. Simon. We'll look straight to the nuts, straight to the nuts, yeah. <laughs> 100%, 100%. But look, until next time, everybody, you know, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>